Before we start, I have a quick question for you. Who knows what the physicist Marie Curie and the chemist Thomas Midgley Jr. have in common? Both died due to their own inventions or experiments, I should say. Marie Curie died of a special type of anemia, which was probably caused by her experiments with radioactivity. And Thomas Mitchley has invented leaded fuel. Two years later, he um, got seriously ill. You might be able to guess, intoxication. However, he didn't die from that. But another of his inventions led to his downfall. When he was 51 years old, he was diagnosed with polio, and then he invented a cable control that helped him to get out of bed in the morning. And one day he got caught in it and strangled himself. Why do I tell you all that? Because Marie Curie and Thomas Mitchley are two famous examples for what can happen if you expose yourself to hazardous substances. The share in highly potent substances has been on the increase for several years now and it will further increase in the coming years. And therefore it is even more important that we look into how we can protect both people and the environment. So what are the challenges that we face and what are possible solutions that will be available? This is what we are going to discuss over the next 30 to 45 minutes and these are our guests. Richard Deng, you look at uh, all this topic from two perspectives, pharmaceutical production and its developments. One is the perspective of the outfitter, your sales and product manager at the SCAN AG. And furthermore, you've been heading an expert group for eight years at ISPE, an expert group on containment. And for 20 years, you have been del dealing with using highly hazardous or radioactive substances. We are happy to have you here. Furthermore, we will talk to Professor Dr. Karl Wagner. He is a professor for pharmaceutical technology and biopharmaceuticals at the University of Bonn. You do research um, um, administration types that are more highly available and we are also happy to have you here. Rainer Ulrich, you are a senior expert at McKinsey and for 16 years you have been responsible for transformation process in the pharmaceutical industry. And today you will focus more on the economic aspects of containment. We are happy to have the three of you here. Mr. Denk, today every fourth API in pharmaceutical production is highly active and the tendency is on the rise. By 2018 it will be 10% and what substances do we talk about? Mo mostly it's anti-cancer products but also hormones, antibiotics and other toxic materials. Why, Professor Wagner, do these substances become ever more important, what are they needed for? They mostly, they are therapeutic drugs and they have a higher selectivity for their receptors and therefore they can be effective at a low dosage and then they also have side effects but um, there's also a hazardous effect for healthy people and we have to make sure they are protected from that. So it's positive for the industry to have these substances but of course it also um, puts some challenges in front of the industry. Which are those difficulties? First of all it's health and safety, the environmental protection and the protection 
from cross-contamination, particularly in production, and it also affects the solubility of substances. Why is that important for production and what are the risks and problems that come with it? Well, generally, the increase of the selectivity goes hand in hand with the reduction of the water solubility of substances. And that makes it more difficult to clean devices during the process and the cleaning needs to be optimized because we can't use purely organic solvents to clean it. We will talk about the cleaning later and that has always been, been important of course but for the future we need um, even more specialized solutions for that. Mr. Denk, what are the challenges that uh, we are facing with respect to technology when we talk about these high potency substances? Well, the requirements um, for the technology is cleaning, as has just been mentioned. That will be the biggest challenge for the next year. Um, we need to clean properly, but in a way that there's no cross-contamination between two substances. Let us um, talk a bit more about why this becomes ever more important. You said that continuous production will become ever more important in uh, the pharmaceutical industry. Um, we still have to catch up compared to other industries. We still mostly work with batches in the pharmaceutical industry. So what is the, will the role of the continuous production will be? Well, the less interfaces you have in the production, the less cleaning steps will be necessary. If from the um, API till the final product you only have one step, you reduce cleaning processes as well as risks for the environment and the operator. What does that mean for the containment? Um, what do I need to change as a producer? I need to think of new strategies. The batch production that we have at the moment requires a revolution, so to speak. We need to couple and combine the plants with each other. They need to be smaller, more flexible and be closer to one another so that there's less interfaces. In order to have a good containment in the continuous process, the plant, of course, needs to be um, designed and constructed in this according ways. What's the most important point from the point of view of the plant manufacturer? I'd like to add something. Um, it has just been mentioned that the equipment will be smaller and that's important. It's smaller by a third. And the challenge is that I can have a rather closed process and handle it. So a product is fed in, it's formulated um, until we get the final product. But the challenge is that the processes, devices need to be cleaned in a way that there's no exposure if I open any parts of this device. So we talk about very complex processes that will become more process in the, f sorry, complex in the future, and that concerns not only production but also research and distribution. Who has to be involved in that in the future? I'm sure there needs to be a lot of knowledge exchange from other industries. I think that the entire value chain has to be involved. It doesn't mean that if production, let's say, optimizes the plant, but then the supply chain um, follows the traditional production steps. Development also has to make a contribution to, gen to make sure that the risks are under control for the environment and operators. You are on the research side. Have you noticed in your daily work that you are, have been much more involved also during early stages of the planning process? Unfortunately not. And I'd like to contradict this a bit. Um, continuous production and containment won't um, necessarily increase complexity, but the problem is that often um, the overall strategy isn't right because there's still some conventional procedure steps. The 
involvement of several players um, has become relevant in earlier stages and I'm not only talk about the containment strategy but also the production technology and in future it will also be possible to reduce dust and then it will be easier to integrate it into a containment strategy. I'd like to stick with the topic of um, complexity. If you need so much expertise and knowledge in order to plan and control the entire process, will it only be the big players that can afford that? I don't think so in this case because now what we need now can also be provided by smaller players on the market. It's not only the big players that can uh, initiate this revolution. It just takes a certain courage to do so. And often we have that problem in the pharmaceutical industry. There's lots of ideas and um, semiconductor and the motor vehicle industry have already um, got good solutions. And we need to also put that into practice. So that could also be an op opportunity. If I specialize in a smaller segment, I can also be at an advantage, right, as a smaller player. Yes. Professor Wagner, is it true that the industry can set its limit values for hazardous materials itself? And if that's the case, who um, checks whether these value limits are realistic and well, it's not um, com uh, totally arbitrary, but we will have an assessment that checks what the influence is on the human body with hazardous material and that's what the producer has to do. The data we have are still not enough and um, I'm sure that everyone works in good faith and um, when there's uncertainty still, the um, limit values are set rather strictly and they can adapt, be adapted later once you have more data and it's the most important point to uh, uh, ensure the safety of the operators. But there's no standards um, imposed by authorities, no. I'd like to hand over to Mr. Denk, who might be able to say more about that. Well, normally, the companies are in charge of occupational health and safety, and ISPA provides guidelines, and at the moment they are developing a manual for containment, and it explains how to exactly measure the values, and um, it provides the values that show that that make sure that the operators um, have lifelong safety. And quality control and health and safety go hand in hand. They're quite closely interrelated. And both have to become more strictly regulated when we work with these highly toxic um, substances. So if we think about integrated containment, uh, production, automation, real-time data, how will this be handled in the future? I'd like to get back to what you said before, Mr. Wagner, if we discover new paths in the pharmaceutical industry and reconsider our processes and maybe modify them, then I'm sure we can um, get um, good solution. EMP will meet containment, for example. So the entire GMP um, area can also be revolutionized. We have talked about um, cleaning already. It's a big issue also when it comes to product change over. If I um, change over from one API to another in the same machine, what are the requirements there and how are they different? Well, whether the tradition, whether it's the traditional or continuous production, we have they are similar. We have got an EMA guideline that we should use for exposure and they chose limit values of what of residue that is permitted from the 
after a change over. And you have swipe tests to find out whether you are within the limit value. Is that a trend towards single-use products, disposable products? Well, there's two developments. One is that they say, let's stay with the traditional procedures, but then there will also be an area that will be covered with um, disposable solutions. And where we then might not need containment or just um, for some time every once in a while. Um, this doesn't sound very environmentally friendly. Well, I'd like to say something about that. At the early stages of development, it's particularly important that we have um, work areas that are under GMP or non-GMP. In non-GMP, it is possible in the early stages of development to accept a certain level of cross-contamination. We talk about product development here and not about clinical samples. So by making it simpler, we might be able to get better and more flexible solutions and achieve a quicker product changeover because the problem with analytics is also when we talked about, when you talk about NAMO, nanogram that well you talked about time and that's probably decisive for competitiveness how quickly can I realize um, a product and um, also we have to look into time to market times yes often the you operators and companies want to optimize their plants and processes but as with especially with respect to cleaning but we want to just have less cleaning or maybe um, use some disposable solutions so that we have strategies for the future that reduce the time needed for Cleaning. We talk a lot about the production process itself, but it's also important that products can be delivered and uh, sent away. So that also brings logistics into play. And what are the expectations for logistics in that, Mr. Wagner? Well, logistics isn't very different than in case of other bulk materials. Either you have a continuous production so that you solve the problem of contamination in line, but you could also um, have hermetically sealed tablets that then go to the packager, but then they have the prob problem of a possible dust development and it needs to be solved a second time, so to speak. So production and packaging should be combined in one step. I'd like to add something. Uh, we usually see that uh, the pharmaceutical industry is not the quickest with respect to throughput times. We are much... Um, slower than the automotive industry, for example, and we want to reduce the um, turnover times and um, have the dwell times prolonged. You talked a lot about um, technical solutions, but there's also the factor, the human factor. So on the one hand, um, automation will increase, and on the other hand, if processes become more complex, during planning and management and so on and so forth. What does that mean for the qualification of the employees? Do we have enough experts? Well, generally we'll have a lack of experts in the future. We will have too many low-skilled labor. Um, but um, the processes should be designed in a way that the employees will not be able to commit a lot of errors. There are clear 
procedures that an operator can and has to influence and um, beyond that he won't have any access. Then you need an expert that has to decide what will be done. If I may add something to that, I have also worked in development myself and a big problem, particularly uh, for European workers, if I um, don't get the employee on board and also delegate tasks to him and let him work independently and have him take decisions, then he isn't sufficiently associated with his task, he doesn't identify with it, and then this person might not notice when things um, go wrong. You've mentioned an important area, the health and safety, and it's important that we also um, communicate awareness. You've already said that you've talked about highly active and highly hazardous materials. Um, in the past, they only talked about highly active substances, but now we also speak about high risk because many people who work in production aren't aware of that. We need to tell them, now you work with a highly hazardous substance. And you might not notice tomorrow, but the effects might kick in in five to 10 years. So this awareness that this white powder is no longer um, safe, but rather dangerous, that's what we need. And then you c have a chance to be safe. So if we talk about the factors of human and technology, is um, the human being the one that increases the errors? Well, if we measure the limit values, then we've noticed that it's extremely important that the people have gotten the right training. It's decisive that they receive further training. We have one lady in the steering committee that carries out those uh, measurements, the value limit measurements, and she said it's best when you come to the night shift, to the production, and you say to the operators, please show me your hands, then you can do a swipe test and you can find out whether they work correctly. Well, the source of errors that leads to warning letters has increased significantly over the last years that the num because the number of human errors has increased. So, therefore, the requirements for the processes need to be such that um, we don't only need further training courses, but we need processes that completely prevent these sources of error. We've just talked about further training. What about the um, basic training? Do we have the right programs for the requirements of the future? Well, both um, all pharmaceutical um, staff are very well prepared in Germany. They, the awareness they need has risen during the dual training programs, the vocational trainings, I don't see any deficits here. But the problem with the increasing warning letters due to the human factor, in my opinion, is based on the fact that the industry um, introduces ever more SOPs and training courses and the industry thinks that by that it can solve all the problems but they need to really convince their employees of what they're learning and give them enough time to put everything they've learned into practice because if that won't happen and if they immediately go back to the usual time pressure at work after the training course, then there will be no positive effect. Well, the awareness about high active substances is very high in production, I think. Um, I have noticed that many sorry, not high enough. I've experienced that many of um, these operators don't, aren't aware how active and hazardous the material is. Now, I'd like to ask you a final question that might be important. Mr. Denk, how flexible do solutions need to be in the future if we consider everything that we've just discussed? And how individual? Well, they need to be individual, 
we need to find um, new approaches and I think it's the right time to do so. Either it can um, do an integrated containment or introduce continuous processes. The containment has to be an integral part of the processes. It can't just be added on top of it. Professor Wagner, how will medicine develop with respect to the high potency substances? The share of high potency substances will increase if we get more targets. Uh, producers that uh, will develop more high potency drugs. I think we can expect a lot of changes and in addition a bad solubility of the APIs will also increase so that the um, topic of cleaning will become even more difficult. Mr. Ulrich, how is the pharmaceutical industry well prepared for those challenges? Well, from my point of view, the awareness is on the increase. If I compare it with industries that uh, are, have a head, had a head start, like electronics, automotive industry, or semiconductors, we still need to catch up, and the pharmaceutical industry has noticed that they need to change, but um, they are still lacking courage to actually take the next step to actually um, start implementing changes and usually we're a rather traditional industry so we need the courage so i hope that our t discussion today has helped to initiate this process and i'd like to get back to thomas mitchell jr the one with the leaded fuel who died in an unfortunate way at the end. A bit after the fuel, he invented um, the CFC gas. So he's responsible for two of the most um, dangerous or hazardous materials of the 20th century. Well, I hope that you are well equipped for the future and I hope that our panel discussion um, contributed to that.